Hello everyone. We are now completing the descriptive statistics section. In this particular video, we will discuss relationships between two quantitative variables. We're going to focus in this particular video on establishing the intensity of the relationship when such a relationship exists between two quantitative variables. They can be both discrete or continuous. The first type of dependence that exists between two variables is a functional dependence. Suppose x and y represent two variables. There exists a functional dependence between x and y if there is a function f such that y is the result of f of x. Typically we would call x the independent variable and y the dependent variable. For example, if x represents the number of hours an individual works in a week and y represents the weekly salary, then it's very possible that the individual's salary can be expressed as a function. For instance, if the individual's base pay is $100 to which is added an hourly rate of $20 per hour, then the variables x and y are related by a function. y would equal 20x plus 100. There is a functional dependence between the variable number of hours worked and the variable weekly salary. In a scatter plot, we get to visualize the representation for the paired quantitative data. Excel possesses graphical options which will allow you to produce two-dimensional scatter plots, and this type of graph graphical representation is an excellent visual way of determining the existence of a relationship between two quantitative variables. The alignment of the dots may even allow one to recognize the form of the dependence that there could exist between x and y be it linear, quadratic, or other types of dependencies such as exponential. Here is an example of a scatter plot which would depict a perfect linear relationship. So this would be a functional dependency between x and y. And that's pretty clear because degrees in Fahrenheit and degrees in Celsius are related by a formula. Here is an example of a functional dependency that would be most likely of a quadratic nature. This looks like an alignment of parabolic type. This too makes sense since kinetic energy is related to the squared velocity of an object. Here is a dependency that looks of the exponential type. Again, this is a functional dependence where the number of bacteria grows exponentially with time. Linear relationships are one of the many functional dependencies that exist. A linear dependence between two quantitative variables implies that there could exist a linear function that connects them. In other words, can the experimental observations of variables x and y be explained or even predicted by a function of the form y equals ax plus b. When the alignment is imperfect, we usually speak of linear relationships rather than a linear dependency. We must also avoid assuming that, the, that there is a direct dependence relationship, or even worse, that there is a cause and effect dependence between the variables. The apparent alignment could be coincidental or the result of, of a confounding factor. Visually, the linear dependence of two variables is observed on a dot plot or a scatter plot when the dots line up perfectly. In practice, this seldom happens. However, to a certain extent, a linear dependence or linear relationship, weak or strong, can be observed. For instance, here is an example where we show the data obtained from the sales of homes in Granby that are expressed in terms of the area of the house and the price of the house. This is how the scatter plot was presented 
So clearly there is a visible relationship between the variables, since typically increasing values of area has led to an increase in values of price. Of course, this is not a functional dependence, since the alignment is clearly not perfect. In this example, a linear dependence relationship is not as clear when considering the scatter plot of alkalinity versus depth. The data to construct the graph is taken from research that it was conducted on lakes in Quebec. There's no apparent alignment of the data, which leads us to believe that there is a weak relationship, if a relationship exists at all, between the factors depth and alkalinity. The linear correlation coefficient is a more numerical way of establishing the, the intensity of the relationship between variables. The coefficient of linear correlation is also known as Pearson's coefficient of correlation and is denoted by rho of xy or by r of xy in cases of samples and is very closely related to covariance which is also a measure of alignment. Below are presented the formulas that will lead to the calculation of correlation in the case of a population and of a sample with the appropriate notation and labeling. The covariance itself will require a separate calculation, which depends on how the data is presented. The data can be presented in listed form for both population data or sample data, which doesn't require that we have the frequency or the number of repetitions of each observation xi and yj or yi in this case. However, if the population was grouped or if the sample data was grouped in frequency tables, then we will have to take into consideration the repetitions, which is why nijs appear. If necessary, we may even need to replace xi and yi by centers of groups if the variables are continuous. The correlation coefficient is a measure of the intensity of a linear dependence or a linear relationship that connects variables x and y. Here are the main properties of the coefficient rho or r first thing is that a coefficient of correlation will always take on values between minus 1 and 1 inclusively. If there exists a linear function that connects y to x, so y equals ax plus b, with a slope of a greater than 0, then the correlation coefficient will be 1. If there exists a linear function such that y equals ax plus b, so again a perfect functional dependence of the linear type between x and y, where a, the slope, is less than 0, then the correlation coefficient will be minus 1. If x and 1 are independent variables, then the correlation coefficient will come out to 0. Here are situations where the scatter plots display a decreasing trend between variables x and y, and notice how the more aligned the points are, the closer the correlation is to being, to being minus 1. In the extreme right case, a correlation of minus 1 is obtained because of a perfect linear alignment. In these three other scenarios, the trend is an increasing trend. So there seems to be a linear relationship between the variables, Therefore, the correlation coefficient is positive, and in the case of the first graph where the alignment is perfect, then the coefficient correlation is exactly 1. The use of letter R insists here on the fact that we're talking about sample data that was used to construct the dot plots. Here are two situations where the coefficient of correlation would be 0. In the first case, the scatter plot seems to be completely arbitrary. There's no perfect alignment, there doesn't seem to be any trend, and overall it looks like um, we have no way of predicting an increasing or a decreasing tendency. In the second, all the points are perfectly lined up, but there is no change in height. 
which basically means that variations to x will not provoke or will not cause the values of y to change. In other words, y is independent of x. Here is a, a dot plot or a scatter plot representation for the alkalinity of a lake in terms of its depth. And you're probably not surprised to find that the coefficient of correlation is very close to zero. Slightly negative, showing that there is a bit of a decreasing trend, but in no way is this a perfect alignment. In contrast, when observing the price of a house in terms of the area of its first floor, we get a coefficient of correlation that is positive, meaning that the trend is an increasing one, and it's actually a very high correlation of coefficient uh, of correlation. We have a 0.781, so we're close to, or definitely closer to a 1 than to a 0, so the alignment is quite observable. Now it's false to assume that if a correlation of coefficient is 0, that x and y will necessarily be independent. Here is an example where we have x and y that are clearly functionally dependent on one another. In fact, we can identify the shape as being one of a parabola of a or of a quadratic relationship. So despite the fact there is a functional dependence between x and y, the correlation of coefficient would actually be equal to zero. That's simply because the relationship that exists is a nonlinear one, and unfortunately, correlation coefficients are ways of measuring the alignment. So again, the disposition of points along a linear expression. So if x and y are independent, the coefficient of correlation will be zero, but the, but the reverse is not true. If the coefficient of correlation is zero, it does not necessarily imply that x and y are 